All right, everyone, today's video is going to be about the best perks and skills in Kingdom Come Deliverance by category. Now, to save a little bit of time and also to promote the fact that there is so much diversity possible within the game, I will not be telling you the perfect allocation or what is, in, honestly, in my opinion, the perfect allocation. There are definitely other combinations out there. I won't be telling you all of the different perks that you should be getting with your skills. I'm only going to tell you one or two or maximum of three within each category that are extremely, extremely powerful. That way, you can put everything else into other ones you can build your character extremely different from mine or extremely different from other people's and still have a great unique experience while also having increased efficiency and getting a lot of the really strong benefits without further ado let's get started with main level which is the largest amount of perks available in one single category and i do count first aid as one single tree of perks or one single perk upgrade even though it does take three points it enables you to use bandages early on then it becomes 25 percent increased efficiency to bandages and it also applies applies your healing skill in dialogues and then first aid three just means that you only have to use one bandage even when your limbs are extremely damaged and you are accessing more dialogue options so it just opens up a tree of possibilities within the game when talking to npcs and also makes it a lot more convenient so you don't have to carry around a lot of bandages so i think that first aid is a double pronged talent to grab and it's very useful the second talent or perk that I highly recommend is Burger. The reason for this is that most of the vendors or important NPCs in the entire game are located in either towns or villages. Therefore, when you're getting a permanent plus one bonus on strength, agility, vitality, and speech in those areas, you will gain access to better dialogue options, you'll have better roles against their skill checks, um, and you'll be able to increase, you know, your, your haggling and various other areas while talking to important characters. So Burger is a very, very good talent to have. The third recommendation from main level kind of goes off of your personal play style. If you are, you know, typically a criminal and you've found that you have low reputation in a lot of areas, uh, and that's the way you like to play the game, you know, you're committing a lot of crimes, then infamous. With a low reputation in a given area, you also get a plus one bonus on strength, speech, agility, and vitality. But your reputation rises much faster than usual, and the penalties for serving jail time are less. You can't combine it with local hero, which is the second perk, um, but if you are committing a lot of crimes and you want to be in the criminal storyline path, then the, the negative of this won't really affect you, right? You're not going to be gaining a lot of reputation ever, so, you know, you're fine to just commit more crimes, and then you'll also get this permanent bonus, which will help you get out of sticky situations with guards, etc. So, if you are a criminal, then select Infamous, and if you're not, if you're trying to be a hero in the land, if you're trying to be a positive, moral, upstanding character, then select Local Hero. If your reputation is high in an area, you get the same bonuses, strength, speech, agility, and vitality, but at the same time, your reputation falls much faster, and it can't be combined. So if you are a criminal, select infamous, and if you are a hero, select local hero. Both of these have very good bonuses. The rest of your perk allocation in main level is completely flexible. There are some that increase strength, or charisma, or speech, or you know various other things. Uh, but those are some bare bones bonuses that are extremely helpful, no matter what type of playstyle you're going for and will boost your efficiency a lot of the way. Next, we have the Strength Tree, and there are only two talents that I'm going to recommend, two perks, rather, um, but one of them does require three, same as the first aid in the main level. Number one is going to be Mule. Mule allows you to carry more, more weight in your inventory, and I think that it is one of the best things to have in the game for quality of life, convenience. You get 15 pounds more for Mule 1, and I would recommend that. Mule 2, you get 20 pounds more, and Mule 3, you get 25 pounds more weight. This is kind of the difference between, you know, carrying a lot more items to sell and thus netting a lot more gold or Groshen and not being able to do that and having to leave stuff behind. So I have a very high carry capacity. My horse also has a very high carry capacity and I'm very rarely struggling to get things to vendors. So I do recommend Mule 1, 2, and 3 for 3 points. And then the second talent that I recommend is Tight Grip. Your stamina regeneration will not slow down in combat, even on the weapon backswing. This means that you can fight and you know pull off a lot more combos a lot more often and it is extremely powerful you'll notice that once you select this perk you very rarely have any problems in combat with stamina regeneration even if you're injured so tight grip is highly recommended depending on your fighting style you can also get things like clinch master which are very strong but just a general rule of thumb and selecting talents that are universally powerful in the game and will be helpful no matter what you're doing or how you're playing mule and tight grip are probably the best two choices Outside of that, of course there's customization, I'll probably say this with every single skill uh, or category. You can always select different ones, but these are some that are very, very helpful in my opinion. 
Moving on, we have the Agility Tree, and honestly, there aren't a ton of talents here that I find to be super powerful. There really isn't anything that jumps out at me as being the best thing to grab. If you get perfect throw, then you have a better chance of throwing winning dice, and you can use loaded dice, so it becomes a very effective way to earn money. Um, but there really isn't anything that jumps out as super important. If you're a light armor wearing person, if you really prefer to have mobility and light armor on instead of plate armor, then you can grab the light armor perk. Um, fast striker is very nice if you're using an agility based weapon, but there are not a whole lot of things here that are essential to grab. So I would recommend, depending on your playstyle, fast striker if you're using any short, uh, sort of short sword, and then light armor if you're not using plate armor, and then maybe featherweight. Uh, I guess featherweight if you have to select one, if I had to recommend one, um, because there will be some instances where you are falling to get to certain Easter egg nests or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you will take some falling damage, so taking 30% less is pretty nice here. For Vitality, we have some very, very interesting ones. Number one that I recommend is Human Dustbin. You can dispel hunger with anything. You won't suffer from eating poisoned or spoiled food, but neither will you have any positive effect from it. Does not apply to alcohol. The thing that makes this so appealing is that food spoils fairly quickly. Unless you select a lot of different perks, food is going to spoil in your inventory or your horse's inventory or your supply chest very fast. And it will then give you a debuff when you consume it. This allows you to eat whatever's in your inventory, regardless of quantity or quality, and not suffer any penalties. And the benefits that you are thus avoiding are not even that strong. So Human Dustbin, to me, is a super quality of life perk to just make progressing through the game that much easier and make it convenient to just keep your character nourished. The second talent that I think is the best here in the Vitality Tree is Blood Rush. After beating your first opponent, you get a 50% attack bonus and your stamina will regenerate one quarter faster. There are a ton of fights in the game that have more than one person. There are some single, you know, opponent duels against hard-hitting opponents, but they're rare, they're few, and they're far between. So Blood Rush is going to allow you to kill one opponent and then have a huge advantage moving on to the next. Combat in this game is not that well balanced further on. Once you get strong, you feel like a juggernaut. Nothing can touch you, and you're ripping through opponents with ease. Uh, and Blood Rush is one of the ways to maximize that and be able to tear through everyone, especially when there's a lot of opponents. The third talent that I recommend is Revenant, and this will allow your health to regenerate gradually, even if you have taken a large amount of damage. It won't be something overpowered where it just zips back up to full health, but it will, you know, let you go between fight to fight to fight without having to sleep. Uh, it won't, you know, keep your health super low. There won't be an instance where you're scared and you can't fast travel because you might get attacked and you're super low on health and you need to go save and you don't have any, you know, save your uh, schnapps or however you pronounce that in your inventory. Revenant will allow you to regenerate your health without having to do any of those things and without having to worry. It will take a little bit of time, but it's a really great quality of life grab. It does require a minimum level 12 and it's the last perk in the tree, but I do recommend grabbing it and saving at least one point for it. There's a lot of other great perks in this tree as well, situationally, but those are the ones that I believe to be the best overall in a universal approach. Something like Balanced Diet requires you to eat a certain way for five consecutive days. That might not always be possible, so again, they're all situational, um, and I don't feel that they're as valuable as the three that I've mentioned. Moving on, we have the Speech Skill, and among these talents, there is one that I recommend above all else, and that is Silver Tongue. The reason for this is because there is a technique where you do what I call reverse haggling where you pay more for an item or you sell an item for less, kind of in the opposite approach to what you would normally want to do to increase your own profits. This will boost your reputation with a vendor and with an entire region. And while you're doing this, since you will be doing this over and over and over to maximize the gain over a short period of time, you will be increasing your speech skill because you are haggling. So Silver Tongue is the absolute best talent that I can see in the speech tree because of its double effect while also increasing your reputation. The other recommendation that I have is selecting either Highborn or Lowborn. Highborn being a skill that increases your speech level by three when you talk to nobles and wealthy people. And then Lowborn being a skill which increases speech by three yet again when talking to commoners. I would select either one of these. They are mutually exclusive. You can't have both. Um, but if you have Lowborn, it will help with a lot of vendors and drastically increase your speech there and let you get out of some sticky situations. And Highborn gives access to some really cool dialogue options with nobles and wealthy people. So that's a really good one as well. One of these two, depending on who you want to prioritize in your playthrough. 
Moving on to the combat tree, we have defense first up, and there's only one talent in this tree that I consider to be of specific note, and that is well-worn. You're able to put on your armor so cleverly that its real weight is one-third lighter than its actual weight in the inventory. The reason for this is because, like a lot of other talents, it will reduce the amount of weight that you're carrying and give you more space in your inventory for loot, and that is a great quality of life boost throughout the entirety of the game. So well-worn will actually have a huge impact and a huge effect because there are so many different armor pieces in the layered armor system so well worn in my opinion is the best talent in the defense tree but it does require a minimum level 12 it takes a long time to get there i'm sure that there will be people that state that other talents are better in better in different situations um but that's the only one that i think is universally applicable to everyone's playthrough and the other ones feel free at your discretion to select them uh, but that's the one that i wanted to highlight now we have the Warfare Tree, which is one of the better trees in the game for combat. Go figure, obviously, due to the name. Uh, but it also has a lot of really good talents in it. Number one that I recommend is Furious. The less your maximum stamina, the greater injury you cause. This can have a really positive effect in fights where you are getting injured and you know taking a lot of health damage and your stamina is getting lowered in tandem to that. So Furious is a very effective talent for making sure that you are never at a severe disadvantage even when you are taking a lot of damage. So I highly recommend Furious though it may be a little bit more situational. If you do have really good armor then you're gonna have decreased efficiency from this talent. Next is Sadist. When you draw an opponent's blood it gives you a plus one strength bonus. It's very easy to do that. Um, against anything other than a fully heavily armored plate armor knight uh, plate mail knight then you are going to be able to draw blood very easily with either the first or the second stroke um, so sadist will give you a plus one strength bonus in the majority of fights even if they do have a helmet on you can sometimes draw blood from the face area or various other uh you know situations so sadist is very strong then chain strike each blow in an uninterrupted chain will hurt your opponent more than the previous one any interruption will cancel the bonus this makes your combos the ultimate damage machine even half of a combo will be able to drop even the strongest opponent for some reason, this is highly effective, and even then, they have some balancing problems now with combat, where when you finally get fully decked out and you get a really good weapon, um, nothing can stand up to you anymore anyways, but Chain Strike, again, emphasizes that. And then the final talent that I would recommend is Against All Odds. Again, there are very few you know, hard or difficult fights where you're only fighting one opponent. You'll have 20% greater strength, agility, warfare, and defense in a fight where you're outnumbered. Now, 20% is a lot. That's one-fifth greater and if you do have any you know high amount of stat points in any one of those categories in my case i have 18 strength right now i'll have 20 percent more um which is a significant boost it's not just one point or two points it's uh, quite a few points there so against all odds i don't have it here it is a minimum level 12 attribute but i highly recommend that one as well for the axe tree there's only three and it doesn't really matter they're just combos so pick whatever ones you like or grab all three for the mace, same deal. They're just combos. And for the sword, I'll gloss over all of them. I've picked quite a few, but again, you can pick whichever ones uh, you feel fit your weapon type better or your play style better. They're just combos. So pick them, memorize them, train with them, and then use them. Now we move on to general skills, and we can start with alchemy. As you can see, I have level 1 alchemy. I haven't brewed anything on this character in particular, but there are a couple of things towards the end of the tree that I highly recommend. Uh, in the beginning, here before we get to that, in the beginning I would recommend trial and error. It does require minimum level 5, but when you're brewing you can make one extra mistake without affecting the result, which just means that you're more likely to get the potion that you want, which will help with leveling and get you up to those higher tiers where the real useful traits are. Up in the higher tiers at rank 10, I highly recommend Routine 1. You can now auto-brew potions you have brewed once before, but you can only brew one. This means you can just simply select the potion from the recipe book and then pop one out, boom, done, perfect. You can sell those items, they're very easy to construct, they require you know minimal amounts of herbs, uh, and it's really convenient. And then, the, the to cap it all off and be the most amazing talent in the tree, you have auto-brewing will produce three potions for the price of one. This means that you can now pump out potions at triple the pace, you can sell two of them, keep one, or just use all of them, and you can auto-brew them from the recipe book. So routine one and two are by far the best things that you can get here, um, but they do require minimum level 10 and then 13, so until that point, you should grab trial and error to make things easier. There are some other really cool talents in this tree, like Venomous Blade. Poison applied to a weapon will remain on the blade longer. If you're trying to go for some kind of stealth agility build with light armor and a poisoned weapon, um, there are some really cool talents, and I'm not trying to say that they're bad or that you shouldn't use them. I'm just trying to recommend some of the ones that I feel are the best, and that's why I'm only recommending a few, because there's flexibility for everyone watching the video to select other things besides the ones that I, that I say are quite good. 
Next we have the drinking tree, which is really cool that they added this to the game in my opinion, but there's not a lot here that I find to be very powerful. I'm not going to review each and every one. There's only one that jumps out as me as being quite strong, and that is loose tongue. When drunk, you get a 50% bonus on speech and charisma. When hungover, these stats drop by 50%. The thing that I found is that a lot of people use the drinking tree or, you know, beer or wine or whatever to increase their charisma and speech before important dialogue options, because that's one of the primary applications of the drinking skill or function in the game. So if you're getting a 50% bonus to speech and charisma for that duration, for those dialogue options, that's amazing. The hangover, you can just wait the hangover out or sleep it off whenever you want. But when you are consuming that alcohol to get that bonus and have those better dialogue checks and those better dialogue options, a 50% bonus does not hurt at all. So Loose Tongue is one of the best talents that I've seen here uh, for specific situations where you have a quest where you need to have a desired outcome. Loose Tongue is absolutely going to help with that. Now we have the herbalism tree, and there are three talents that I highly recommend. Number one is resistance. Just pick enough poisonous herbs that it will increase your vitality by a permanent plus two. That's really easy to get and super nice to have. The next is flower power. If you've got enough fragrant herbs in your inventory, you get a plus two charisma bonus. That's quite a lot of charisma, and it's very easy to have that many herbs in your inventory. They don't weigh hardly a thing. Uh, you can just keep them on you, and then you'll have that plus two bonus. I don't even have it active right now, but that's an easy plus two to charisma. And then the third one, when you get to level 10, which I'm almost at, it would take me about five minutes to get to level 10 now, you can grab a leg day. Herb picking activity will add experience to your strength stat too. So that becomes a double method of training as well as gathering money. So leg day in the herbalism tree is really good once you're at level 10. Next is the horsemanship tree. And there's not a lot in this tree that I find to be universally effective or very important across the board. The only thing though is that I've seen a lot of people recommending, you know, mounted combat. And they are right, mounted combat is quite effective. If you have, you know, a bow and arrow and you're mounted on your horse, you can run away, they sprint after you, they never have enough stamina to catch you, and you can just pepper them with arrows. Well, the knight perk here, you get a 15% damage bonus in mounted combat with both range and melee weapons, will boost that efficiency. So knight is the only thing that I would recommend in the horsemanship tree. Outside of that, you can get whatever you want. Uh, but I don't view this tree as being super effective because you're just using the horse for transit in most situations, unless you really like mounted combat, but I think it's a little bit janky. Some people have said that the combat in general is a little bit messed up, which I don't agree with, but I think mounted combat is a little bit harder. Um, it seems like an afterthought, honestly, in the game. Uh, but knight will increase your power from horseback, especially with the bow, so knight is the recommendation here. Next is the hunting tree, and there's a lot of really good things to grab here, and a lot of these things increase the amount of coin yield per kill while you are hunting. Antlers, Butcher, Tanner, Huntsman, uh, all of them. Tanner, I guess, would be my recommendation. Uh, you're able to skin any animal that you kill. It's not, you know, confined to just deer or just boar or just rabbits. Um, Tanner is going to give you a skin from every hunted animal, which increases the amount of gold that you're getting in a lot of situations. So Tanner is quite good. And then down here, steak tartare, uh, you can now eat raw meat. This may not seem like much, but when you're out in the wilderness, you don't really want to be traveling back and forth. And if you do get hungry, then it results in you having to fast travel. As soon as you can eat any raw meat, it makes it a lot easier to stay topped up on your nourishment. So steak tartare is a good perk to get at minimum level 13. It is the last one in the tree. Uh, and there are other good ones out there, but I recommend Tanner and Steak Tartar. Next, we have lock picking, which a lot of people dislike the current system, and they are working on changing the system and improving it. Um, but once you have these two perks, it really doesn't matter anyways, even on console. People disagree with the uh, controller stick way that it works, but once you have these, it won't matter. Lasting lock picks. Your lock picks will be more durable and last twice as long, and it only requires minimum level three. Since I got this talent, I have never once broken a lock pick. I don't know if that's a glitch. I don't know what the reasoning behind that is, but this does not uh, this does not double the amount of time that they last. This I've literally never broken a lockpick since I got this. So this is absolutely the highest recommend recommended talent in lockpicking, in my opinion. And then Deft Grip. The starting position when lockpicking will be closer to the end of the lock, making it easier to open. This just decreases the amount of time that you're going to spend lockpicking. It just makes it easier to pick every single lock. And if you combine that with lasting picks, you'll really be able to just tear through. I was level four or five and I was picking, you know, very hard and master level locks even though the system is quite difficult to master at first. So lasting lockpicks and deft grip. Next we have the maintenance tree, and there are a ton of things in this tree that are very cool to have. 
Um, things like Serrated Edge, Tin Opener, Blacksmith Sun. I'll let you guys figure out all the different individual ones for yourselves, but the one that I wanted to highlight and talk about specifically is Stuffing. If you read, when you repair your own armor, you're able to pad it so it doesn't jangle as much and lower your stealth ability. As you can see over on the right hand side of the screen, I'm in full plate armor and my noise is only 41 and that's still quite high. I could lower this yet again if I continue to repair my own armor and repair every piece. I can get my noise rating down to about zero. That means I'm walking around as a fully armored plate armor knight and I have zero noise. I mean... I don't know if this is a glitch yet again. There are some problems with the game. It's a fantastic experience, but there are some, you know, technical issues. I don't know if that's a glitch. I don't think that you should be able to walk around in full plate armor and have zero noise, but you can with the stuffing perk. So just go buy some of the armor kits from a, from an armor vendor and then repair your own armor and you'll be able to have zero noise with full heavy armor. Next up is pickpocketing. And this is honestly one of the most difficult things that I have yet been able to master. As you can see, it's level 2, and I can't even claim that I have my other character with a higher pickpocketing skill. In fact, I think my other character is lower. Pickpocketing is extremely difficult for me to do. I always get caught. Um, but secret pockets at minimum level 2 will give you increased money when looting, and looting is something that I do all the time. So secret pockets is really nice. I would recommend that. But outside of that, a lot of these things, you have to get very high in the in the pocket pickpocket skill tree to even see or to unlock. Immediately reveals three of the items in a, a pickpocket victim's inventory or three, which is all of them. Um, you have a lot of these talents which are which are good. They're good for pickpockets, and you can make some money, but it just doesn't seem very viable or reasonable or fun to me. So pickpocketing, if that's your cup of tea, I respect you a lot, but. Personally, Secret Pockets is the only thing that I would recommend getting or caring about from this tree. Now we have the Reading Tree, and there are a lot of really useful things here. Uh, towards the end of the tree, you have stuff like Cartographer. The whole map is revealed to you, showing all settlements, hunting spots, and caves. I am actually working towards that right now on my other character, so that I can, you know, show the secret locations of, like, every single chest in caves, etc. Uh, but I'm not there yet. And on this one, I have very low reading skill. Uh, but in the flow, when reading, you get... Tired and hungry twice as slowly as normal. I don't know why they said it that way or phrase it that way. I feel like they should have just said uh, half as fast instead of twice as slowly. But whatever, in the flow is pretty good. Uh, it will decrease the amount of nourishment loss that you have and make it so you can read more in one sitting. So that's another one that's really good for training. Um, and then there are the magistrate ones. You have magistrate one, uh, which is being well learned. You make a better impression on people and get a plus one speech bonus when trying to persuade a guard. This means if you commit a crime and a guard catches you, then you have a better chance of your speech bonus being high enough to get away from that encounter uh, and to not pay anything and also not go to jail. And then if you bring that up to magistrate two and then three, you'll have a plus three bonus, which makes it almost guaranteed that you will be able to out, uh, I guess, linguistically trick. You'll be out, you'll be able to out talk the guard and get away from that scot-free. So magistrate one, two, and three recommended, I guess. Cartographer is really nice if you get all the way to the end of the tree and then in the flow to help with training. Last up, we have the stealth tree. And the only thing that I consider worth note here is stealth kill. Allows you to kill from stealth. You have to have a dagger in your inventory. Uh, I think that's one step above takedown, though you don't want to be using this all the time because sometimes you can end up killing a valuable NPC. Um, so use takedown sometimes, stealth kill other times. You can get more loot from this. You know, you can take out NPCs from camps, bandit camps, etc. that you don't want there. Stealth kill is useful, and there are a lot of other useful talents in the tree. They're just more situational. So if you want to make a case for any other perk in the stealth tree or any other skill tree or perk tree in the game, uh, whether it be herbalism or alchemy or horsemanship or whatever, uh, leave a comment down below. And if it's good information, I will pin it to the top and I would love for more people to see it. You don't have to jump at the chance to try and argue or prove me wrong. I tried to leave this open-ended and I would love to have contributing you know, uh, gamers out there add to it and give their information uh, to help others. So please leave a comment if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for that. Stealth kill. The only thing that I recommend from the stealth tree. That's going to wrap it up for my complete guide to the best perks in the game. There are other things that will be useful if you're trying to go for a different playstyle approach, if you have different goals, if you just have a different sense of immersion in the game and you want to be different and play different. Absolutely, that's why I left it open-ended. 
Best of luck to you. Let me know your comments down below. Check out the links down below in the description as well. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to get integrated with the community. Check out the Patreon if you do want to support what I do here and help Upper Echelon LLC with its various projects. YouTube is kind of unreliable at this point. Um, check out the Facebook group. Check out the website forums if you want to get integrated there. Um, and just in general, thank you for watching the video. And as always, have a nice night.